Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today on request I'm gonna be talking about uh, Ray 5 versus SHR which is Synology's hybrid rate and I'm gonna be comparing it with rate 0, rate 5 and SHR. We'll go into the table and we will play with some discs and I'll be drawing on my piece of paper or Dave Cat as it's actually called. Um, the SHR is widely used on these Synology boxes which I actually need to turn this one off. You press the button until it says beep and then it turns off because um, I, I've made a backup of all my videos on this and I need to bring it home to put on my big Synology box at home. Let's go to the table and talk some RAID. RAID. Redundant array of independent disk. When this was invented back in 1988, it was actually inexpensive disks. I read that on Wikipedia and someone reminded me. And page two. Da, da, da. What a PowerPoint show, huh? This is called DaveCat. RAID 0, or also called Striped, that's two discs. And I have two discs right here. And um, how this works is, you have your MP3 file. Like, here is an MP3 file. And you wanna store this on a RAID 0. So the file goes, there is some kind of a processor that um, you send this to a processor, this can be Let's just put some lakes on it. CPU, the CPU. This can be on the RAID controller or it can be the computer's processor. The MP3 file goes in here and that decides, oh, we're gonna split this up. So half of it goes over here and half of it goes over here. So there is half an MP3 here. How do I draw that? M M not the entire piece, so half of the file is here. And over here is the other half, and that's the, the tree, right? So half here and half there. And this is very fast because um, it, it just splits up the files. And this is the simple way of looking at it. It will actually go down to block level, split it up. Every other 64K will go this way, and the next 64K will go this way, and so on. So that is striped. And it's, it's rather simple. So, but if we move on to RAID 5, RAID 5 is kind of the same thing. Um, we have a processor. I'm just gonna, okay. Not all the legs are attached, but that's a CPU. And the MP3 file goes into the CPU and the CPU uh, splits it up and says okay we'll uh, put some of it on some of it on this drive some of it on this drive and then it will make a checksum and that will go to this drive we get the same thing we get a part here we get a part here and we get a part here and this part is just a checksum of what went into this should this one die, then the file can be recovered from this checksum and that part of the data over here. RAID 5, does, it does not mean that this disk is just uh, the checksum always. Next time, uh, the next mp3 file, let's just put that here. That will go here and that will go there and then the checksum will go here. So this time, this is the dodgy one and the file goes into these two and so on. So the parity or the checksum, it moves around between the three disks. So every time it starts a new block, the checksum will be on a different disk. This is uh, rather good because if a disk dies, let's just say this one dies. Well, the second mp3 file is, is all there. The first one, it has to calculate. So um, there's not as much calculations going on here. It only has to recover one of the two mp3 files. The, the other one is still all good. And of course, the, the third mp3 file, the checksum will be put here and the data will be put on the two other ones. That's a little deeper into how this works. 
you normally you can set the the size of these blocks so a three megabyte mp3 file will be split up into blocks on the hard drive that can be anywhere from i don't know how far it goes down 2k and up to 64k is pretty normal i'm not sure but it's split up into smaller section and um, put on the hard drive so what is shr well shr is almost the same thing as rate 5 oh i forgot the d rate 5 it stands for synology hybrid rate and it's a software rate it's not a controller it's not a hardware controller that does the calculation this is done through software and the first and most important thing is that the other RAID systems made RAID on full disks. Here we have the three disks, and that's represented this way. Uh, this could be one terabyte disks each, right? And um, that would be the way that that it sees the RAID system on the disk level. On SHR, it it still sees disks but it splits up the disks into sections. If I have a one terabyte disk here, it will divide this disk into three disks. So one TB disk here, but it will be divided into three disks, kind of, it, this varies. So we will have 300 and 333 gigabytes on each of these disks right and the same thing it will do on the other ones now I've just drawn four of them because the Synology over here has four disks um, and this is smart because it's not doing rate on the disks it's doing rate on these partitions but it's making sure to put these small partitions on different drives so when when I came, come with my mp3 file here, it will be put on this one, it will be put on this one, and it will be put on this one. And there will be a, there will be a, uh, a checksum. One of them will be a checksum. Let's, let's see, this one is the checksum on this one. Well, the last one is, is included as well. Three, three, three. So the, the data will go on to these small sections and that's no different from what RAID 5 is actually. It's the same thing. The brilliant thought of dividing it into these smaller sections inside the physical disk is that, uh, well, let's just, uh, we have two, one terabytes all the way here. But then, if I came with a two terabyte, well, then it can be divided into more sections. This is not smart in this configuration, but let's just see when it's smart. Uh, I hope you get this, because right now we, are, we have different sizes disks in a RAID configuration, and this is normally not smart. So let's see, let's get a blank piece of paper. If you have four disks of one terabyte in a RAID 5, right, we will have four terabytes of, of storage space. We will only be able to use three terabytes because one of the disks go out for the checksum. So four times one TB, but we get three TB of data, right? If we do this in a RAID H O S H R, we have the same thing. It's exactly the same. We get three terabytes of data. But if I go out and buy, ooh, Paycheck came in, three terabyte disk. I wanna put this in my array. 
and I can do that. I can, from a RAID 5, I can take out a disc. Let's just take number one here. Take out one disc. RAID 5 will still uh, only be able to use it as a one terabyte disc. RAID SHR will be able to use it as a three terabyte. In this configuration, it will not help us because where RAID 5, the smallest disc sets the disc size in SHR, the biggest disc is uh, taken out for security. So in this case, it does not matter. This will be exactly the same configuration on both RAIDs. But if I take out one more of these discs and put in another three terabyte disc, we will see a definite other picture. We'll have our, I'll just make it short, our five. And that's uh, two times one TB plus two times three TB equals um, the smallest disk in RAID 5 is the one that decides the size. So we will still only see three terabytes. But in SHR, we will have we will have the same thing. Uh, I don't want to write this twice. We have to take this the largest disk out for security. So we'll just uh, redraw one of these for the, our calculations, and then we have this left. We actually get five terabytes of data with SHR. So we have improved this by two terabytes. And if I go exchange the next one with another three terabytes well we get two terabytes additional in that configuration to make this really apparent let's go back and see say that we have this configuration one three terabytes and three one terabyte disks and let's just say that paycheck was good so in in a rate configuration you can change one disk at the time so we go out and we buy one eight terabyte disc, right? That's the beast. Um, right now, when I change that one terabyte to an eight terabyte, the biggest disc is the security. So that is redrawn from the, from the calculation. So right now we get uh, five terabytes right away. In, if we're just running RAID 5, we only get three terabytes. So already we are increasing this by two terabytes and that's more of this disk's fault. And if we go out and get another eight terabyte disks, which by the way is the biggest disk I'm aware that we can buy right now. Well, it looks a lot different. We have to redraw one of the eight terabyte disks for security, but now we are left with, how much is that? 12 terabytes of data. We get 12 terabytes of data in this configuration in SHR, where we in RAID 5 would only get three. So let's just... Uh... Okay, with RAID 5, we have the three terabyte, the eight terabyte, and another eight terabyte, and the one terabyte. But here in RAID 5, the smallest disks uh, makes the rules. So these are all treated like one terabytes and that gives us a total of three terabytes where in shr we uh, we have the 3881 and we have to redraw one of the discs because the biggest discs we lose for the, the checksum and that brings us to 12 terabytes if we in raid 5 um, exchange two discs more to eight terabytes we will get the maximum number. Also, if we take this one and exchange it with a three, uh, it will be able to see the, the entire array as three terabytes because these are bigger. Whereas here, the biggest disk that we have to take out for redundancy. So in between configurations, SHR is much appreciated because you get a lot more disk space in this configuration than in this configuration. And this is all achieved by dividing the disks into smaller sections and doing RAID across 
the sections or the, the partitions or what you want to call it on the on the individual discs instead of just using the entire disc so it must be cheating somehow because this doesn't add up right i think it's uh, it's doing rate 5 at some times and it's making a mirror at some times and um, well it adds up being a lot more data anyway this is pretty much why i really like the synology boxes so much because you get a lot more storage when you're in between configurations and you can use a variety of discs not having to go out buying all new discs right down here let's just see that i have a qnap box that did it doesn't do this this one is full of two terabytes discs and that really sets a limit to how much data i can have on that box because well two terabytes you run out of disk space eventually now i need more disk space and i don't want to go out and exchange all these two terabytes at once so i'm actually going to be bringing in another synology box here i'm going to be bringing in an four kind of same it looks exactly like this one but a newer one and that is able to to handle different disk sizes i can very fast get up to a bigger disk size than on this one by putting in some some different disk sizes and uh, that's a lot cheaper than going out and buying six new drives for this qnap box so i hope you got something out of this video i know a lot of you want me to to look at RAID set and the set sf file system um, and i will try and look into that um, i really do like to know just a little bit about it before i start yapping along so um, thank you for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day bye bye